Hello friends, this video on hydrocarbon part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's understand the chemical properties of alkenes. If you see, they are rich source of pi electrons. They have pi electrons, right? Because you see the alkenes, this is how it looks, correct? So these are my pi electrons, right? So pi electrons are there. That means they are prone to attack by electrophiles. Electrophiles are one which loves electrons. They can easily be attacked by electrophiles and they show addition reactions a lot. The double bond breaks and the single bond, uh, it, it goes for addition reaction. So sometimes they also go for free radical, free radical addition reaction also. But in most of the case, it is electrophilic addition reaction. If you see the reaction types, you have addition reactions, addition by hydrogen, addition of halogens, hydrogen halide, sulfuric acids and what we will discuss all these. We have allylic substitution reactions also, we have oxidation reactions also, in oxidation we have combustion, control reactions and ozonolysis. So we will study all these types of reactions. We will also study polymerization in alkenes. So let's start with addition of dihydrogen. This is pretty simple, we have discussed this a lot that in presence of my metal catalyst, I can easily add dihydrogen or hydrogen to an alkene. Correct. The way it works is this is my metal surface and this is my hydrogen bond which breaks into a weak metal and hydrogen bonds and then my alkene comes. Now alkene comes in the surface, this bond also gets weakened actually, this bond gets weakened. Since this bond gets weakened, this hydrogen attached to this carbon and then this hydrogen will attach to this carbon, this bond is totally gone and you have only one single bond, right? This is what how you, you do the addition of hydrogen in the alkenes. Let's study addition of halogens in alkenes. So if you see halogens like bromine, chlorine, you can add these to alkenes and they form vicinal dihalides. I told vicinal dihalides when you have two, in the two carbons you have halogens, they are called vicinal dihalides, right? But addition of iodine doesn't take place in the normal condition. And if you see the, this is a good test for the unsaturation where you have this um, a bromine solution, reddish color of the bromine solution is discharged and the bromine adds up because the bromine is consumed, the reddish color of bromine goes off and it, it, is, it becomes faint and it goes off totally actually. And we use CCL4, I'll tell you why CCL4 because CCL4 is an inert solvent. This is a inert solvent. Carbon tetrachloride. We can also use CH2Cl2, that is methylene chloride, because both of these are inner solvent. If you don't use CCl4, then somehow water will come from some place and it will add actually. So we will talk about that actually in the next slide. And if you see this, uh, this involves cyclic halonium. We will we'll talk about this formation now. And this is a Syn addition, anti addition actually. This is the anti addition. So one halogen comes from this and one in this side. It is anti addition actually. That you the, the product you get is a trans product. We'll discuss about this. This is the example of the reaction. I have CS2, uh, CS2Br, you add bromine. So actually, if you see, if you write the structure of this, it has to be something like this. This three dimensional, right? So, it's, so let's suppose if this is going in, this has to be coming out. This is the actual structure. Correct. Right. Or you can say this will be the structure. One bromine here and one bromine here. Okay, so let's see the reaction mechanism. So let's suppose I have a double bond here. This is my double bond. The moment I have a bromine here, so I have this here. Okay. This double bond will attack this bond. Correct. So now this bond will break, and whatever this negative charge will come, it will try to attach here. So with this, 
the product will be getting is something like this. So I have a, I have a bromine here with a negative charge and one this comes out so it, with a positive charge. So this electron moves in this direction so it has to be Br minus and this will become Correct. Now this is a this negative bromine will attack this carbon, and this bond will break actually, and this positive charge will go off. So with this, the output you'll get is so bromine here. Correct. And this is nothing but if you see this is a but this Br and so if you see this is a anti addition. What happened? There was a double bond attacked bromine. Wait, this bond broke, so this got a negative charge and this got a positive charge actually. Right? And this guy attached here and this guy got attached here. So you got bond something like this. This Br minus attacked this carbon. Right? And then this bond broke actually. This bond broke, the negative charge went here, so negative and positive got neutralized. And this guy has a positive charge here, so positive and negative form of bond here. Correct. So if this reaction is carried out in present of water instead of CCl for example, then the water, the alcohol will be formed. Why? Because in this case instead of Br minus, the water will have OH minus. So here the second reaction will be OH minus. Let, let's see that actually. Let's see that. Uh, this is called hydro halohydration of alkene. So I'll take the same example in presence of water. CCl4 is not used here. So what happened the same double bond, I have my bromine here. This double bond will attack this guy, right? This is will attack, this bond will break. This will get a negative charge, it will get a positive charge and this, since this bond broke, it will try to attach here, right? Positive charge type because now with this, you got something like this. Plus, I have a Br minus. Right? Plus also I have OH minus here because of the water. This guy will attack here. This guy will attack here, this bond will break and this negative charge will go off. Right? This positive charge will go off and with this you get something like this. Because this will go off. Right? If this bond will shift in this direction, it will become like this and OH here. Correct? This is called hello hydration of Now let's see the addition of hydrogen halides. You can see HCl, HBr, HI, you can add any of these. It will form alkyl halides. In the last example, it was forming bisimple halides. Now it will form alkyl halides. In the order of reactivity is HI has a maximum, then Br, then HCl. Correct. Okay. So if you see, this follows the Markovnikov rule, and the bromine gets added here. Why? Why? If you see here in this case, if I'm the, if you see this uh, this carbon, this is sp sp two hybridized. This carbon, if you see, this is sp three hybridized. Correct. So if if, if we talk about the, if, let's suppose you have to break this bond actually, yes, break this bond. So you can break this bond either in this way or this way. So let's try both approach. If you break in this form, this way, then this will get a positive charge and this will get a negative charge and if you break in this fashion you will get something like this correct and now once I get hydrogen added because this will have H plus and Cl minus so let's suppose I add this hydrogen here in this so this becomes this guy and here you add hydrogen this becomes this so out of these which one is more stable obviously this is more stable okay because the inductive effect right these guys will give some negative charge to this and it's stable this is more stable. We have seen this is also if you see uh, second degree carbon. This is first degree carbon. So carbocation second degree is more stable than uh, first degree. So this is more stable. So this will form more prominently, and in this the bromine will come, and you will get this product. You will not get this product. Correct. Right? This is Markovnikov. So bromine will get attached in this carbon. Correct. Right? The one which is secondary carbon. This is Markovnikov rule. So 
this is the reaction actually you have so let's see the reaction mechanism so I have this goes this guy here H and have CS3 here so the moment I see H plus here so what happens is this guy will attack with H plus right and this will form a cation so this will form this cation actually correct because this will break in this fashion this will be negative charge this will be positive charge and this negative charge this hydrogen will come and then on this you add Br minus so it will attack here easily so you will get C Br CH3 CH3H and that is my answer now if the same reaction is carried out with different medium with a different product if the same reaction is carried out in the presence of peroxide we follow anti Marconica rule and we get different result. Let's see the reaction. So, in this case, we have free radical reaction. So, if you see this happens in the presence of peroxide. So, let's see, I have a peroxide here. Correct. So, what happens is this goes for a bond break. This bond breaks and it breaks homolytically. So, what you get is that this is R1, this is lithium R2. You get R1 O dash plus the two free radical again. This is a chain initiation step. And then I have chain continuation step. In that case, you take any of this R1, you react with HBr. So this guy also goes for a homolytic cleavage, and you get ROH and Br dot. So you got B B R free radical you get here. Correct. So this Br free radical, if you see, now I will have CH3, CH, let's suppose this is my initial thing, when it reacts with uh, Br free radical, this will also break actually, this becomes CH3, CH double uh, dot and CH two dot. Correct. Now in this bromine will react. So the, the question is where should bromine add because now I am getting first bromine. Bromine will add first. Correct? I have Br free radical. So if Br adds here, I get this compound. So let's suppose if I, I get, I have two possibilities. One is uh, if Br adds in the terminal uh, terminal carbon, I get this. Br adds here, I get this. Correct? Now, out of these, which one is more stable? Obviously, this guy. Correct. So, this guy is more stable, so this guy will be formed. So, the bromine will attack here. So, you will get CH3, CH dot CH2. And in this, now my H free radical will be added, and I will get this product. So if you see, this is anti marconica correct? So now if you see the bromine is added in the terminal carbon. And this happens only in case of HBr and that too, only in presence of peroxide. So please note the reason why this is happening is because it is all chain reaction, uh, sorry, free radical reaction. And this is the bromine free radical which is breaking it, right? So when this bromine free radical will break it, bromine will have to be attached somewhere. So if bromine get attached here, you get more stable compound, if bromine attached here, you get less stable compound, right? This is not less stable. So, well, this will favor this compound and thus anti marconic rule will follow here. And this effect is also called crash effect, anti marconic rule or crash effect. And this is happening, this happens only in case of HBr, not in HCl and HI. See, in HCl case, the bond HCl, right, is very strong, right? So even in case of uh, peroxide, this Cl free radical is not formed. This this is not formed. So if Cl free radical is not formed, the whole reaction we can't. This this can't help, right? Because for this to happen, Br free radical has to be formed, right? If Cl free radical is not formed, this reaction won't happen. In case of Hi, I free radical is formed, but this guy is very weak, very weak. This is not reactive at all, not reactive. So they don't attack alkenes. Instead of attacking alkenes, what they do is they combine with each other. 
So I dot and I dot will combine to form I. That's what they do. They don't react with alkenes. But see, HCl Cl dot is not formed in HI. They are it is formed but not strong, so they combine together to form I2. But in case of HBr, uh, the Br radical is formed as reactive enough to attack alkene. Let's take some examples now. So we have to give the IBC you know, the products obtained by addition of HBr to hex one in in the absence of peroxide and the presence of peroxide. So let first let's give hex one in five six one two three four five six. This is my six uh, carbon. This is hexane and for one in, so I'll add double bond here. This is hex one in. Correct. So let me add the hydrogen also. This is H2, this is H, this is H here, H here. One more H here, H here, H here, and CH2. This is my hex one. Now, if you add in this case, I have two options. One is you add HBr in absence of peroxide. There is no back side. So then Markovnikov rule will follow and the bromine will get attached here. Correct? So what you get is Br and this is what you will get actually. Correct? If you do the same reaction of HBr and if you have peroxide now, so anti Markovnikov rule will follow and bromine will get attached here. So it will be Br here. Correct. This is what you'll get. You can add hydrogens to it. So now, the name of this guy will be two bromo hexane. Correct, because the bromine at second position. The name of this compound will be Brahman one bromo hexane. Why the bromine is at position one? Correct. It's two bromo, bromo hexane and one bromo hexane. Now let's take the addition of sulfuric acid in alkene. So we take cold concentrated sulfuric acid and this adds my this group according to Markovnikov rule and this is an electrophilic addition reaction and this forms alkyl hydrogen sulfate. Right, because this, if you see H2SO4, this gives H plus N HSO4 minus. Right, and this guy gets L. So let's see the reaction mechanism. So I have H plus and HSO4 minus. H plus is more strong; it will attack first. Or in fact, uh, this guy itself will attack H plus. Right, this guy will attack H plus. Now it can either uh, H plus can get attached to this guy or this guy, right? So let's see both the product. So again, if you can either form CH3 and plus here, or you can form CH2 when hydrogen attached to this carbon and CH2 in the plus. Here. So out of these, which one is more stable? Obviously, this this is secondary carbon. This is primary carbon, right? This is more stable than this is formed. Now on this, my HSO4 minus will. So this will form CH3, CH, CH3, and, and SO3H. Now let's take addition of water to alkenes. So in the presence of few drops of sulfuric acid, alkenes react with water to form alcohols. And this also forms Markovnikov. So if you see here, this is water you are adding in presence of H plus. And why is H plus required? Because this is something which initiate the reaction, right? Because this bond will attack this H plus. Correct? So in the presence of sulfuric acid, water gets added. So if you want to see the reaction, this is how it is. I will show you this reaction. Or let me do in this in this only, right? If you react with this. So you, this hydrogen can add in this carbon and this carbon, two possibility, right? So we have two possibility, we draw both the possibility. 
So the one possibility, and the other possibility is hydrogen gets added here. So if you see here, this guy is tertiary and this guy is primary carbon. This is not stable, this is more stable, right? This is more stable, so this will be formed. And now this, on this, since I have water molecule, so my water molecule will attack this guy plus this water has, you see, electrons, right? It has electrons here. So this will attack this carbon, correct? So it will form. So this water molecule will attack this carbon. So with this you will get this guy, CH3, CH3 and here you will get OH and the plus sign. And then this bond will break and H plus will be free now and this will get CH3 and you will get OH and this H plus will be free. Free to go again back to the solution. So this is what you will get. Right? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.